What makes small business content compelling? Yeah, you know, I think that really depends on each consumer. Um, uh, because, you know, I think this is a good question of, you know, a lot of local businesses ask us, well, what should I publish? I mean, I remember I had a, there's a nice Italian restaurant. I encourage you to go, uh, uh, it's uh, Zero Nota Ove at, in uh, New York City. Uh, they're a client, just so you know my biases. Um, but I walked in, I talked to you know their manager, Bruno, and I didn't tell him who I was. And I asked him about his restaurant and what was good here. And he gave me this whole story about you know how they make this fresh mozzarella. And in the back, in the mozzarella, he trained under a guy under the Casa de Mozzarella in Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, who knows this one method from Italy. He told this whole compelling story that made me order the pasta with the fresh mozzarella. Now they make the pasta in house. And then later we talked and I, you know, told him who I was. And he's like, you know what? One of the things I struggle with is what do I publish? You know? And I think local businesses are, you know, wary that like what is compelling um, content. And I said, that story you just told me was super compelling. I ordered the pasta immediately. It's a great story about what makes Zero Otanove amazing. Um, and so I look at local businesses and you know I ask, you know, what is it that makes your, your store, your service, your restaurant, whatever it is, your bar, you know, different? What makes it great? Um, what's in that great dish? What do you offer you know, that's new and exciting? I mean, most businesses have events, announcements, and deals constantly. Why wouldn't you get the word out there? Um, you know, if you're a, a family play space or a kid's gym, you know what your, your, your parents want to hear? The parents in the neighborhood want to hear what to do with their kids because they can't find out where to find that information out. Be the maven in the neighborhood that tells them that, you know, there's a balloon sculpting class in Battery Park City and you should go to that. And there's this great book reading over here. And here's a great little fireworks show and, a you know, animal petting zoo. And everywhere that doesn't even necessarily have to be your business but provides value for your customers. If I were... Um, uh, 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 the uh, pierogi place, uh, you know, in the East Village, uh, which is uh, Veselka, uh, I would I would launch my pierogi recipe. Why? Not because people will start making and stealing my pierogi recipe, but because people would love to hear the secret to the pierogi recipe, and then they'll try and cook it. It won't be as good, and then they'll go to Veselka to have the great pierogies. So I think there are lots of ways that you can provide content that enriches you know, the, the, the lives of the people, of the consumers that go to you. And that sounds, uh, I think it sounds really lofty, but there's so many businesses that I love. Now I'm a foodie, so I, I got lots of restaurant examples like Ipido. If you've had their ramen, what is the secret to their ramen? It's amazing, right? Um, you know, if Momofuku has a new menu, I want to hear about that. Um, there's a great little umbrella and rain store in the East Village called Ame Ame. Um, not a client, by the way. Uh, and I want to hear about their spring sale. And they're doing some cool stuff with charity. And you know what? I actually have a connection to those local businesses. I think most of us do too. Um, and so I think it's a matter of providing content that's both compelling and also not overwhelming. Like, you know, you shouldn't be emailing your entire customer base twice a day. That's too much. Um, but, you know, provide value about what's going on. I want to hear about that. And maybe I want to hear on Facebook or Twitter and not email. Or maybe I do want to hear on email. Um, there's tons of compelling stuff you can put together. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've got basically a playbook of, you know, here are you know, 20 different posts by industry, you know, that you should consider posting on your own um, to really kind of help get the creative juices flowing. Because once you get in the habit, it starts getting really good. As you, you know, your past content gets hundreds and thousands of reads because it's still on the internet and it's still ranking on searches and every day it gets a couple more people reading it. You, know, you get this backlog of content, you see it working and then the local business owner's eyes light up and say, I want to keep on doing this. I really want to talk about my business. And if you've ever talked with a local business about their business, you can see how passionate they are. It's about, it's about converting that passion into an online form, converting that conversation into conversational media like social media and email.